Uh, Philip, a spanner in the works then for the Trump administration. Uh, the uh, White House has called this outrageous. Yeah, the White House isn't happy with this, and the U.S. president himself certainly isn't happy with this decision coming from a federal judge in San Francisco. He has tweeted about this, the U.S. president, that is, and has attacked this judge, this liberal judge, he says, for making uh, this decision. It stops Donald Trump's decision from a few months ago to stop the DACA program altogether. That's the program that shielded around 800,000 uh, immigrants. These were children who came to the United States with their parents illegally back in the day from uh, deportation. All of them were now in danger of being deported had they not renewed their status, for example, for another two years. And we know that plenty of them did not. Now, what this does is it stops the end of the program in its tracks. In other words, it continues. But this is not the end of that. There will be a an appeal from the U.S. government, undoubtedly. That will be the Department of Justice making that appeal. And then this case could make its way all the way to the Supreme Court, something that the U.S. president in his tweet this morning here, local time, already indicated. Uh, this is very similar to what has happened uh, with the travel ban that had been imposed by this administration. That had been challenged by many courts in the United States, in including courts in California, and was then changed again all over again by the Supreme Court. And that travel ban in a new version is now very much in effect. That could, ha could happen this time around as well. The timing of this is very interesting because right now the U.S. president is discussing DACA. Uh, this is the uh, uh, possibly a new dream act that would give uh, these young immigrants the chance to stay in the United States. He is discussing this with bipartisan senators and members of Congress pretty much as we speak. It did so very publicly yesterday in the Roosevelt Room of the White House. Democrats want this program to exist. Republicans, meanwhile, seem to be willing to risk it in order uh, to get a border wall built between the United States and Mexico, one of the big campaign promises on behalf of the U.S. president. As you can see, many, many different things coming together here with the lives of 800,000 immigrants here in the United States very much on the line, their futures here on the line in the United States at risk of being deported. This morning, that looks a little bit less likely because of this decision by a federal judge in San Francisco. All right, Philip. Well, of course, the other big story coming out of the U.S. today, uh, Steve Bannon resigning uh, from Breitbart. Yeah, and that's quite a fall from grace uh, for Steve Bannon, the man who many say was pretty much responsible for getting Donald Trump into the White House in the first place. He was the head of the Donald Trump campaign, after all, at the moment of his election victory. And he was one of the most important advisors in the White House for the U.S. president before he was fired or Steve Bannon decided to leave. That depends on who you believe right now. But of course, what changed afterwards were the quotes that Steve Bannon gave to Michael Wolff for his now already infamous book, Fire and Fury, in which he described a meeting between Donald Trump Jr., the president's son, and Russians in Trump Tower as treasonous. That led to some very bad blood between the U.S. president and his former senior advisor. He has now left Breitbart News. He also no longer has his radio program on satellite radio. In other words, Steve Bannon will now have to find something else to do. Maybe this gives him to ch the chance to create a whole new conservative movement within or rather outside of the Republican Party. It's very unlikely uh, that we'll see the end of Steve Bannon. He has been such an influen influential voice in U.S. politics over the last two years or so. The last time I saw him was when he was on stage in Alabama with Roy Moore, the Republican candidate uh, for the U.S. Senate, who of course lost that race to a Democrat in a major, major upset. That was maybe a first look at how Steve Bannon's star is qu not quite as important as it used to be. Uh, and he was very much going against the uh, point of view of many inside the Trump administration when he was supporting that very controversial Republican candidate in Alabama. Very much a fall from grace for Steve Bannon, but uh, you'll not see the end of him. All right, Philip, Philip Crowther for us uh, in Washington. Thank you for now.